Hello learners, welcome again to this lesson. Uh, this is part four of this chapter, chapter two of form two one, that is chemical families, patterns in properties. So we are looking at alkaline earth metals and in the previous lesson, we looked at the physical properties of alkaline earth metals. So in this session, we are going to look at the chemical properties of alkaline earth metals. So in chemical properties, we are going to look at uh, the first property or the first chemical property, which we refer to reaction of alkaline earth metals with air or simply reaction with oxygen. So we look at magnesium first. So what, is, what would be the observation when magnesium reacts with oxygen? So magnesium burns in oxygen with a blinding brilliant white flame to form a white solid. Uh, this white solid is due to the formation of two products that is magnesium oxide and magnesium nitride. So magnesium is a very reactive metal and when it is burnt in air, it reacts with both oxygen and nitrogen. So it gives two products, one magnesium oxide and magnesium nitride. So these are the equations. So the chemical equation for the reaction between magnesium and oxygen to give us magnesium oxide and magnesium plus nitrogen to give us magnesium nitride. So that is how magnesium reacts with oxygen. We look at calcium. So calcium burns in oxygen with a faint orange red flame to form a white solid of calcium oxide. So calcium reacts with oxygen to form a white solid of calcium oxide. Also, calcium is a reactive metal, so it reacts with nitrogen also to form calcium nitride. And this is the reaction or the chemical equation between calcium and nitrogen to give calcium nitride. Okay, that is the first chemical property. Then we look at the second chemical property, which is reaction with chlorine. And we start by looking at magnesium. So what is observed when magnesium reacts with chlorine? So magnesium, when burning a piece of magnesium, when a burning piece of magnesium ribbon is lowered in a gas jar, containing chlorine, it continues to burn. It continues to burn with a brilliant white flame to form a white powder. So it forms a powder. This white powder is what we call magnesium chloride. This is the chemical equation between magnesium and chlorine to form magnesium chloride. It is a solid. So magnesium plus chlorine to give magnesium chloride. What about calcium? So what happens when calcium reacts with chlorine? So calcium continues also to burn in chlorine with a bright red flame. Also, it forms a white powder of what we call calcium chloride. So in the same case, calcium reacts with chlorine to give us calcium chloride. Here is the chemical equation. Then calcium may not steadily react with chlorine or may not uh, burn for a long time. And this is because a, a coating of calcium oxide is formed first when the metal is heated. However, uh, under suitable conditions, calcium will continue to react with chlorine uh, to form calcium chloride. So that is how these alkaline earth metals are reacting with chlorine to form the metal chlorides. 
for example, the magnesium chloride and the calcium chloride. <clears throat> then the next property we are going to look at is the reaction with water. How do alkaline earth metals react with water? We begin by looking at calcium. So calcium sinks in water due to its high density. It produces a hissing sound. So the difference in the reaction between the alkali and alkaline earth metals is that alkaline earth metals will sink uh, unlike the alkaline metals that floats on water. So alkaline earth metals will sink in water because they have high density. Okay, they will also produce a hissing sound and the hissing sound is due to the production of hydrogen gas. Then a white suspension is formed like a white precipitate and this is because calcium hydroxide is slightly soluble in water. So we are going to see some white cloudy things that looks like cloud. This is what we are calling a white suspension and it's because of the formation of calcium hydroxide which is slightly soluble in water. An alkaline solution will be tested or will be formed. This is due to the formation of calcium hydroxide solution. So meaning calcium hydroxide solution is alkaline. This is the reaction between calcium and water. It is a balanced, well-balanced chemical equation between calcium and water to give us calcium hydroxide solution aqueous plus the hydrogen gas. So that is the reaction between calcium and water. Okay, let us look at magnesium. How does magnesium behave when we dip it in or we put it in water? So magnesium sinks in water. So it will also sink in water due to its high density. Okay, just like calcium, it will sink in water. It has high density and it will also produce a hissing sound, meaning even in this case, hydrogen gas is being produced. A white suspension is formed due to the formation of magnesium hydroxide. You can see the similarities of these uh, metals. And we said the chemical families or the, the elements in the same chemical family almost, almost behave the same. So even these reactions, you can see they are almost behaving the same. So for magnesium also, it forms a white suspension because magnesium hydroxide is being formed and it is slightly soluble in water, just like calcium hydroxide. It is slightly soluble in water. Then an alkaline solution is formed and this is due to the formation of calcium, sorry, of magnesium hydroxide solution. So this is the reaction between magnesium and cold water to give us magnesium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Okay, the reaction is well balanced and the state symbols also were written. So that is how calcium and magnesium reacts with cold water. So now let's look at how these two metals react with steam or water vapor. So we look at an experiment here that was carried out to see or to get the observations made when magnesium reacts with steam. So there was this test tube here that was containing wet sand and magnesium ribbon. The two were being burned. So the, in the boiling tube, we have wet sand and magnesium ribbon, and there were sources of heat that were being directed to this wet sand and to this magnesium ribbon. Then whatever 
products were being formed, were being uh, were moving through this delivery tube to a test tube, collected in a test tube uh, through the method we referred to as the overwater method. So meaning there is a gas that will be collected in that test tube. So let us get to the explanation or to the observations. A wet sand, this wet sand here is being heated first. The reason, this is to drive out air that would otherwise react with the magnesium and also generate steam. So this wet sand here is being heated first for two reasons. One is to drive out the air that would react with magnesium. So we don't want magnesium to react with air. We want magnesium to react with the steam that would be produced by the by heating the wet sand. Then the other reason why we are heating the wet sand first is also to generate the steam. So the steam that we are going to use to react with magnesium will come from heating the wet sand. So in case of an exam, you are being asked why we heat the wet sand first is one, to produce or to generate steam and two, to drive out air that would otherwise react with magnesium. The delivery tube is removed from the water before heating is stopped. So this is the delivery tube we are referring to. We remove it before we stop in, before we stop heating. So we continue heating and then remove the delivery tube. This is the reason. Uh, this is to prevent the sucking back as the apparatus cool. This can lead to cracking. So we, we continue heating uh, before we remove the delivery tube to avoid, to avoid cracking or to avoid sucking back that would lead to cracking of the apparatus. Then the reaction, uh, we say the reaction between calcium and steam is very, very explosive and it is dangerous. So we do not uh, react calcium and steam in our school laboratory. So that is how uh, magnesium reacts with uh, the steam and also how it reacts with cold water. Okay, so those are the properties of alkaline earth metals. And the last chemical property we look at is reaction of these metals with dilute acids. Uh, so the, by dilute acids, we are going to use dilute hydrochloric acid and sulfuric six acid. So when magnesium metal or calcium metal is added to dilute hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid, there's formation of effervescence. So we are going to hear effervescence and this is due to production of a gas definitely and this gas is hydrogen gas. So we have the reactions between magnesium and hydrochloric acid calcium and hydrochloric acid. So magnesium plus HCl or the hydrochloric acid will give us magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. Calcium plus hydrochloric acid to give us calcium chloride and hydrogen gas. So those are the products. Then again for magnesium, magnesium reacts with sulfuric six acid to give us magnesium sulfate plus hydrogen gas. Okay, for calcium, when reacted with sulfuric six acid, uh, the reaction quickly stops. Reason, this is due to the formation of calcium sulfate, which forms a coating on the surface of the calcium metal, preventing further reaction. So, Due to the formation of the insoluble calcium sulfate, uh, the reaction, the, 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 it forms a coating on calcium metal and this prevents further 
reaction. So this is the reaction between calcium and sulfuric acid to give us calcium sulfate and hydrogen gas. Lastly, we are going to look at the uses of alkaline as metals. There are so many. Uh, for example, we can look at a few. Magnesium is used in the manufacture of magnesium hydroxide, which is used as an anti-acid medicine. Then, a low density alloy of magnesium and aluminium is used in aeroplane constructions. So that is the alloy between magnesium and aluminium. Then another use of alkaline earth metals is hydrated calcium sulfate. This one is, you know, we all know it is used in hospitals to set fractured bones. It is well known as the plaster of Paris. So when we break our bones, this is what they use in hospitals, the hydrated calcium sulfate. Then cement is made by heating a mixture of calcium carbonate or what we call limestone, clay and sand. So calcium carbonate can be used together with clay and sand to form cement that is used in constructions. Calcium carbonate is used in the extraction of iron. Calcium oxide, or what we call the quick lime, is used to add acid uh, in soils to raise the pH for agriculture purposes. Calcium nitrate is used as a nitrogenous fertilizer. Magnesium oxide is used in lining of furnaces, and so on and so forth. So all these are the uses of uses of alkaline earth metals, you can be in a position to give at least 10 uses of alkaline earth metals. So that marks the end of our lesson and the end of part four. Uh, in our part five, we are going to look at the halogens, that is the land chemical family. So if you have not subscribed, please remember to subscribe and like this video if you find it helpful so till next time goodbye